Hi, welcome to TGC Today. I am your host, Kathy Ruggles, and this is my co-host. Sajit K. Reddy. How are you doing, guys? <laughs> and for today's topics, we have a few topics to talk about today. We're going to start off with Employment Social Enterprise 101, and that's disability focus. And it's a deep dive exploration of employment social services and innovative businesses that create training and employment opportunities for people facing barriers in the workforce. So it, it is like a, a training kind of thing to help people with disabilities. Okay push forward right. um, into the, the workforce and be able to, um, you know, break down those barriers of Absolutely. them not, you know, being, being able to, to move into a, a role, a position. Absolutely. Um, yeah. I'm not sure if you've faced any kind of issues like that. Oh, I mean, yeah. I mean, when I was first starting out uh, into the work world, uh, I'm, you know, I was born and raised here in Toronto and did, went through uh, university and post-grad and, uh, you know, it was a tough go uh, in terms of finding that first permanent full-time job. Mind you, I'd never had a, uh, I've never had a permanent full-time job. I've always had contracts, but that aside, I have utilized uh, services like this uh, and they were very useful in allowing me to connect with employers and so on. So. Yeah, no, absolutely. And what's great is that there are many people with disabilities that would not even know about something like that. Right. So they don't even know where to go. So they're kind right. of stuck, right? Yeah. So something like this, where it is um, disability focused and it is made available and um, to, to people with disabilities and they are now aware of it, mm. they know where to go, mm. um, where to get the training, right. how to succeed. So yeah. that, that, really is, that it really is good. And um, there was another thing I actually wanted to talk about, and that was the Rick Hansen Foundation. Okay. And again, accessibility, accessor course, and that was set in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. So again, that's kind of similar because um, the foundation is calling all interested building professionals um, to register for upcoming RHF, so Rick Hansen Foundation, yeah. uh, accessibility um, course in, in Vancouver. And mm. that was, um, you know, to get a certificate okay. to know, like, which coincides with federal government's uh, impending Accessibility okay. Canada Act. Cool. Um, so that, that's also a course uh, where people can, can go and get trained um, for, to become accessibility accessors. Cool. Yeah. That's, that's very cool because, I mean, in our previous show, we kind of mentioned the AODA. Right. And so this sounds like, uh, for Vancouver, that the Rick Hansen Foundation is kind of implementing an awareness thing to builders around this is how uh, this should be how you should uh, accommodate right. for accessibility. This is how it should be done, uh, the proper way for it to be done. So that's that's great. That's great. And, and you know what? We're going to take a quick break right now, and we're going to leave you with this clip. And this is for um, TDC and Frank, and that was taken at Coxwell Subway. We'll be right back. back to Socially Served. I'm your host Frank Sroka and I'm here with Raymond from the Accessible Travel Advisory Committee Hello. with the TTC. Hi Raymond, how are you? Good, how are you doing? Not bad. Uh, we're actually going to talk a little bit about sort of uh, upcoming changes uh, that have been in effect with uh, the TTC to make it a little bit more accessible. Sure. So maybe you can tell us a little bit about that and I understand Coxwell Station here has uh, an accessible elevator. Yes, so Coxwell Station where we are now is the uh, one of the most recent stations to get an elevator installed, so now it's uh, fully accessible from the subway platform all the way to street level. And there is a schedule to uh, make all stations accessible by the year 2025. Okay. So it's a pretty aggressive uh, project. So every year from now until 2025, you know, a few stations will come online as accessible, so it's really exciting. It opens up a new areas of the city for people to travel with 
taking the subway, so it's really exciting. And you know, we have to keep in mind too, I mean, as the stations are, they're older, it's, it's really difficult to retrofit a lot of the stations, and it's going to take some time, but I think it's a great step in the right direction. Yeah. I think it's fantastic. And maybe you could tell us a little bit about what the advisory committee does do for the TTC. Sure. So I'm part of the advisory committee on accessible transit, and basically what we do is we provide advice to the TTC about pretty much anything that has to do with accessibility or that affects seniors or people with disabilities. So we look at things like you know the vehicles, when they order new vehicles, uh, we test them out. We look at stations, uh, the way things are designed, communications, uh, wheel trends is obviously its own you know, big thing. There's a lot going on with wheel trends these days and uh, modernizing it and, and adding more improvements. Uh, so we basically work with the TTC to give them advice from real world experience and we have 15 members and so we have meetings, we meet a couple times a month and uh, we have a variety of, of people that have experience in different areas. Some people uh, you know, use wheelchairs, walkers, some people are blind, uh, some people know uh, expertise in like cognitive disabilities, so there's a lot of different uh, experience and skills and it's all towards making everything as accessible as possible. Alright, that's an awful lot of work. It is, it's a lot so of work. It's a, and, and you know, you mentioned about sort of making transit more accessible, and I know recently um, we were on location we, and we actually taped with this exploratory bus. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about that. I mean, you had some people in there to kind of make sure that the buses were accessible and kind of learn from that experience? Yeah, and that's uh, part of a new program. Uh, so there's a really new travel training program, okay. is what it's called, and that's in order to help more people use the conventional system. Mm -hmm. So conventional means like subways, uh, the regular buses or streetcars, and so uh, everybody kind of recognized that there are people that could probably use you know, the, the buses and the subways, but maybe they don't know how or they don't feel confident to just try one day on their own. So this is a program where they can go in, uh, they have a, where they have a, where you were at, uh, where there's like a bus in a safe you know, environment. You can just explore, see like how much space there is, how you can move in, like, and just get acclimated and learn from, from actual uh, staff about how to take the DTC, you know, so you can be more uh, independent. So it's a really new program, but it's, it's really exciting. It's been done other places, been very successful. So, so does that all the feedback that you gain from that uh, so, so that system, uh, that environment, does that go back to the advisory committee? Is that to kind of get that feedback and kind yeah. of learn best practices? It's like a two-way thing. So we, we give advice, but we also learn. Uh, we get a lot of feedback from the public and through things like the travel training. So for us on ACAD, anytime we hear stuff, we always take it into mind and try to pass it along to the right people and just kind of connect the dots and, and improve these programs and things over time. So it's... That's great. Yeah. That's great. And so other new things that are happening too, and I understand too, that you have a new, uh, for support persons, uh, I guess there is a new policy in place for that with the DTC. Yeah, so there's uh, something called the support persons card. So this is a way that um, to travel if you need somebody with you to help you. Uh, so that could be an attendant, it could be a family member or, or something like that. And what you do is you can apply. Mm -hmm. I think if you go to ttc.ca, you search for support person card, you should be able to find it somewhere in there under accessibility. Okay. But you basically fill out an application and then you get this card. And what that means is when you go to take the, the bus or the subway or wheel trans or anything, you you have to pay a fare, but the person you're with gets on for free with that right. card. So, so they can help navigate you through the system, which is really important at certain peak times too, right? I mean, for sure, a lot of crowding at certain yeah. times. And, right. Yeah. So some people need a little help, and it's a way of recognizing, you know, to help them, you know, so they don't have to pay double fare just because they need someone with them. 
And any changes with Wheel-Trans that we should be aware of at all? Or? Sure, yeah, there's a lot of changes. So right now, Wheel-Trans is on something called the Wheel-Trans 10-Year Strategy. Mm -hmm. That's a, a 10-year plan to sort of modernize Wheel-Trans and make it more inclusive uh, for as many different needs as possible. So a lot of sort of mini things are happening, but are big things. So one of them is um, there's a new phone line system Great. now, which uh, so now you can have them call you back, yeah. for example. So instead of waiting on hold for sometimes it can be a long time, you can hit a button and then it'll phone you back when the line is, is free or when, when your Perfect. turn is up. Uh, there's also coming up soon is there's going to be a new website to book your rides on Wheeltrans. So like Great. modernizing that adding some new features, so that'll be pretty cool. Uh, that'll be coming up soon. Um, and there's a lot of a lot of little changes, like uh, there's been more policies uh, that have been updated and put online, so people can get more um, like clarity on certain things, like what's a policy for, you know, uh, you know, guide dogs and, right. and different things like that. Um, so there's there's that. So there's a lot of things happening. That's great. There's gonna be a lot more too. So yeah, some of them we great. can't talk about yet. That's great. Okay. Well, but this is really this is leaps and bounds. This is terrific. You know, it's all about improving the system so people can navigate through it effectively. So like, how does one become involved with the advisory committee in a, in any way? Like, if someone is interested in joining the advisory committee, because it seems like you have lots going on and you need lots of help. How does one go about doing that? So basically every year we have uh, an application process. So every year we pick five new members and then five of the existing people um, retire, quote unquote, from ATAC. Okay. So it's, it's like a rotating basis. So yep. every member is a member for three years, basically. So it's five, five, and five. And in order to apply, um, so we just finished the application um, period for this year, for 2019, but basically um, in October of every year, there's a uh, application that you fill out and you answer a bunch of questions, and then from there, uh, they call some of them in for interviews, and just to get a sense of like what your experience is, you know, like uh, what you can bring to the table. So a lot of it's just real world experience or somebody that maybe advocates for others on a regular basis as well. Um, so anything that you can bring is relevant. And the other thing I should mention is actually, you have to, um, there's these information sessions that you attend. Right. Right. Every, every year in October, there's two information sessions. Right. And that's when we give all the information about okay. how to apply. And okay. So that, <laughs> there we go from there. Okay. So there are information sessions. Uh, so what are those uh, prior to prior to uh, people uh, applying or the? Yeah. So you have to go to that first. Or, so, you, okay. so in order to apply, you have to go to the information session. Uh, they're usually held in the beginning of October, mm -hmm. and then usually uh, in like. September, there's something called the Public Forum on Accessible Transit. Okay. So that's a, a, an event that's held every year. It's sort of like a town hall town meeting. Oh, nice. okay. So it has everything to do with accessibility, and then people get to voice their, their questions or comments or whatever they want to say. So at the town hall, that's when they announce like, when the information sessions are for the upcoming year. So. So do you find there's a, actually there's a lot of people who do apply to be on the advisory committee that it's quite uh, popular that people want to be involved and engaged in, in, in what's happening? There is, yeah. There's a good uh, response from people. I think overall people uh, contribute, I find, in a lot of ways, even just going to like, the public forum or um, people can also do what's called a deputation at ACAT. So every month we have a public meeting. And if somebody wants to come and speak for five minutes to us and give us a comment or they have a concern, they can voice it to us and then right. we can uh, get a response from the TTC and okay. see if we can take their ideas. Maybe they have a good idea how to improve Great something. way to get that feedback, yeah. right? 
Well, Raymond, it's uh, been a pleasure having you on our show with Socially Served. And uh, is there any information that, uh, or a number that people should call, or a website that they should go to if they want to find any more information regarding the advisory committee or about TTC? I would say just go to ttc.ca. Um, there's a, a page there on ACAT, so it's A-C-A-T. And there you can find information about what we're all about, you can find when our public meetings are, so people are always welcome to come and, and just observe uh, those meetings, that they can start getting involved that way. And uh, really that's the main source of information where all the up-to-date stuff is. Great. So, yeah. Well, thanks again so much. And thank, thank you, for you. Me. Oh, my pleasure, my pleasure. And thank you viewers for joining us on Socially Served, and we'll see you next time. going to talk about Disabilities Mentoring Day. Another great topic, another great cause. Mm -hmm. And that's something, it was a free event, mm -hmm. and um, that was something since 2011 mm -hmm. where Dolphin Disabilities Mentoring Day, mm -hmm. and that um, has matched and motivated people with disabilities, and that's for strong community partners uh, to provide unique opportunities for people with disabilities to, to gain professionals um, access and around the world and around job requirements, uh, job duties. And um, it's, a, it's a, great, a great event. And they had uh, their website, www.ccrw.org slash event slash disabilities um, dash mentoring dash day dash three. <laughs> and uh, it just, it, all these, these events and these, these causes is something really great for um, the disabilities, uh, the community, mm -hmm. because it gives everyone access and opportunity information uh, to know where it is that they can go to seek help if they need anything, whether it's employment, whether it's you know, lodging, Absolutely. Any, any kind of thing. It's, it's a fabulous, these are fabulous things showcasing, mm -hmm. again, because what we do here at the Dis uh, Disability Channel right is we showcase abilities. So yeah. these are fabulous things. And um, tell me something. Mm. I know mm -hmm. recently there was a, the Pride March. Right, yes. And I had talked briefly about it, right. stating that you had, you had gone and you had a good time. Yeah. But since you I are here, that. Yeah. Yeah. why don't you tell us a little bit about sure, it? Sure, yeah. So the Disability Pride March is something that I've been a part of uh, for a good number of years, almost since the beginning. Um, and I was at it again this year, and um, uh, you know what, like you mentioned, there are so many great organizations that help people with disabilities and so many great things going on, uh, you know, in the city of Toronto, but often they don't show up to a lot of stuff that's organized right. like this. And that's pretty much, you know, it's a shame. I think more and more we need to come together and work together uh, to, you know, show those in power or those in government uh, right. that that we are serious, we matter, yeah, and, and things need to change, um, you know. And so that's my my kind of comment around that. That you know, when the disability prime march and other opportunities like that come about, if you are an organization that prides yourself on being an a, a advocate for people with disabilities, uh, show up. Show up and show, up, show, up and, and, and show your support. Um, so that's, that's what I wanted to kind of say about that. Um, is there anything you wanted to add? Once again, I wanted to talk about Waldo number three, ah. Dave Stevens, yes. uh, our TDC host in the States. Yeah. And uh, we're going to um, break to a clip of him and the NBA, because, like I said, Dave Stevens yeah. gets he, the man is every. I mean, yeah. he's everywhere, everywhere he's like, you want to be. He's like our local channel here in in Toronto. 
uh, on, on cable there. Uh, the city TV, he's like city TV, he's everywhere. So. He, he really is. So we're going to leave you with that clip and um, we're going to showcase him yes. and, and what it is that he does. Because he, I remember seeing something briefly um, where he said he, he was younger mm. and uh, he, was in a, he was being interviewed because he had done wrestling. Oh, okay. He, Didn't know that. He, yeah, he's done everything. Yes, so he was interviewed and uh, they had, someone had asked him a question of where do you want to, where do you want to be? And he said, um, I want to, I want to be Howard Cosell. I want to take Howard Cosell's job. And I just thought, you know something? Well, Howard Cosell has since passed. However, there are, um, the fact that he has interviewed so many people, like so many athletes, mm. and people actually respect him. That's the thing, nobody looks down on him. No. Like, they will sit down and be eye level with him. So we're going to leave you with that, that little clip and um, enjoy. Yeah. And we'll be right back with more TDC Today. Uh, this is Dave Stevens, and I am here in the Valley of the Sun. Uh, it's LeBron James' debut tonight as a Los Angeles Lake. Uh, hopefully they'll uh, throw me a ball and I can take a three-point shot. And uh, I'm waiting to get hit for a basketball, and then maybe I get to keep it or something like, you know? Oh, I got the ball. Do I get to shoot it? Out of the local media, we've got Fox Arizona. ESPN, I think, might be on the other end of the court. How the heck did you come up with this one, Dad? Uh, we're season ticket holders right back here, so we just got here a little early. That's really, uh, is this, you know, the atmosphere, do you, do you feel like you're at a Game 7 playoff? Oh, it's awesome. Energy's going to be great. It's going to be a great game. LeBron's going to throw it down a few times. It's going to be awesome. It's always interesting to see the different styles of warm-ups and what guys do when they warm up and putting on the headphones and, you know, trying to concentrate and, uh, you know, just getting psyched to play an NBA game in front of a national audience. Uh, you know, when you're fighting for your life in the Western Conference early in the season and you're struggling in the expectations of having LeBron James where you think that's instantly you're going to be 5-0. and oh. I could spin, but it gets my pants dirty. And they've got these great pads over here. Look down here. It's like flypaper, only for shoes. So that way you ensure that you don't get dirt on here. And I told the guy that put it down that this would be great for me for underwear that I could just peel off after I get them all dirty or on the ground. Or, uh, or my friends at Untuck It, if you could un uh, invent, uh, Aaron, if you could invent uh, pants that I could just peel off and take off. I always wondered uh, what I played. Well, I played a little guard and a little forward, and I was a little center. So I was little. Short side cost for some of this. Three to $4,000 to be court side. We realized I can't play basketball in front of a sparse crowd, but that was fun. And Mark Madsen right here, he's, he uh, has been with the team now as a coach. He might be remembered as being one of the funniest guys. Say hi to Mark Madsen, a great NBA player, a legend, now a coach. What's it like for you to take that transition where now you make an impact from player to coach? I feel, I feel excited every time I get on the court as a coach because I know that I can help someone on the team get a little bit better. And you had goals as a kid. I mean, did you ever envision a coaching career in the NBA as well? I always wanted to be a coach. I actually never thought I would end up back with the Lakers, but, but uh, doors opened, opportunities presented themselves, and I'm very grateful to be back. I've loved your career, watched you play. Uh, is, is it weird to be known for the dance as opposed to how tough you were? <laughs> Hey, you know what? I'm still looking to find that rhythm. I'm still looking to get the rhythm. <laughs> Good luck tonight. It's a home game for you guys. Have you noticed that? Got, there's, there's a lot, a lot of, support. of support. Yeah, a lot of support in here, David. It should be a great night. Thanks great to see you. Thanks. We'll see you soon, Pleasure. man. Thanks, man. Right, man. Mark Madsen, Los Angeles Lakers, former player, former coach, right here live on Dave Stevens Speaks It. Uh, how are you guys? 
I'm sorry I have my eye bags on tonight. Um, I was going to try to put Preparation H on to, uh, of course, take that stuff to away. To be able to go around and tell my story and talk about overcoming things in life and having people realize that uh, you can do anything in life. And if you've seen my presentations, if you've seen the new things that I've been doing in the schools and things like that, I had those goals. LeBron James should be coming out. Uh, there's a sea of purple and gold for all my Wickenburg Wranglers, my Minnesota Vikings, and uh, LSU fans out there. If you've just tuned in. This is Dave Stevens on Facebook Live. We are here courtside awaiting the king, number 23, LeBron James. From what college? There is no college. LeBron James is one of the last players that went directly from high school into the NBA when the Cleveland Cavaliers draft. I need a haircut. Don't I need a haircut, guys? Do I need a haircut, everybody? AJ. How hey, much added security did you guys do tonight because of what's going on? None. And I can't, I can't. Zero. We don't have to do that now. Let's go home. Let's go home. Let's go watch the game. No added security. <laughs> no added security. Gold Laker jerseys. And uh, Josh, again, can show as it's filled up behind us now. Again, more and more Laker fans in anticipation of LeBron James. Uh, you see the Shaquille O'Neal, the Kobe Bryants, some Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's. I see a George Mikan, number eight. Pretty cool that a guy who was born without legs from uh, Whitman, Arizona, Wickenburg High School, and uh, can here be courtside just chilling thanks to the Disability Channel and uh, everybody that has been on this journey with me in the last couple of years. So... My buddy Josh Munoz has been standing here. Let me show Josh just for a second here, huh? Make sure you follow me at Joshua Munoz. Also, a, also my agency, uh, which is under Grow Now Social Media Agency. But uh, make sure you follow us. So i um, been helping out Dave, getting some sense of structure when it comes to social media marketing and uh, helping him out. Jeff Schneider is here. You made one. Where's LeBron? He's a no-show. They said he's working out in the other facility and doesn't want to come out here. It sounds that way. I think he was working out a little too much in Old Town last night, so he doesn't want to come out here now. Producer of baseball tonight, Jeff Schneider, now here locally. Hey, Dave, anytime. I'm live. Right <laughs> I mean, to get these kind of tickets. It's a birthday. Who's having a birthday? Mine. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Mike. Sam. Dave, Fred, happy birthday to you. I hope you had fun. I know I did. It's been an amazing time. Thank you to the Phoenix Suns, to DC Headley, Julie Fye, and everybody out there. This is Dave Steven Speaks. We'll see you next time. Welcome back to TDC Today. Uh, there is a topic that I wanted to talk about, and that was an event running to support Special Olympics. Cool. And uh, I thought that was fabulous because that was a torch run, oh. and it was a second annual uh, Guardians Half Marathon and 5K. Okay. And that was in Aurelia. Okay. It took place in Aurelia. Okay. And what was so great about that is that it was for people to, whether they wanted to do the the half marathon or the 5K, mm -hmm. if they wanted to run, if they wanted to walk. Mm. I mean, it was fabulous. Mm. And there was actually, if I'm not mistaken, there was a, a few um, like um, police members okay. that took part in it. Okay, cool. So that, that really was, uh, that really was a, a fabulous uh, event. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, for charity, of yeah, course, yeah. And, and raising awareness again. Yeah. And um, I know you wanted to talk about something happening later on this, this month. Right, absolutely. Um, so, you know, TDC, we're very fortunate that we have so many uh, uh, organizations and partners, partnerships coming up uh, in the future and hopefully more and more and more to come. Um, one of those partnerships is uh, there's going to be an MLSE uh, uh, partnership production that we're going to be involved in so look out for that uh, and more and more information around that um, also too um, with Paramount Food Center on no, uh, in well, later on this later month. on this month yeah uh, we're going to be doing an event with them I believe yeah that's going to uh, be in Mississauga that's okay in Mississauga at, cool. uh, uh, private box cool yeah yeah so so that that as well and uh, 
Uh, what else? The There's one more. There's, oh yes, of course. TD. It's TD, yes. So TD Bank um, uh, is supporting us uh, in, in different things and look out for more and more things to be happening with TD and so many other uh, uh, corporate sponsors are coming forward to, to help us out and we're working with them and, and uh, once uh, we get things actually going, you'll definitely know about it. We want to also thank all of you, uh, uh, all you supporters out there who have been watching and, and, and sharing and liking and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, thank you uh, to you. I know for myself, I've been a part of the channel uh, for about a year and a half now and uh, love seeing all the support and all of the uh, uh, positivity. Yeah. Keep that going. Please like and share and share and share. And uh, anything you guys uh, uh, can uh, uh, assist us with, please let us know. Uh, corporate sponsors are always welcome. Uh, and uh, just, you know, thank you for, for, from all of us. Thank you from all of us. And, and like Sujit was saying, because we also have our own show. So mm. I also have a show, um, Accessibility Travels, with Kathy Ruggles. Right. And uh, you have Keep Pushing. Uh, with several Sujit. of our hosts, yeah, yeah, with Sujit. And several of our hosts actually have other, other like, their, yeah. own, their own, like, kind of side shows as well. So yeah. it is something great that we are getting this positive feedback. And, you know, the word is getting out on, on what it is that we do and what we're trying to do. Yeah. And... Uh, the main fact is that we are showcasing abilities. So mm. we are out and about everywhere. Mm. And we just want this to grow. We want other folks to come forward and, and do more and more shows, but we need more and more support in doing that. Uh, you know, there's not only us in front of the camera, there's so many folks. The great people behind. Behind the camera. Um, and, and, you know, we need more and more support around that. So uh, we're here and we would love to see you someday soon. <laughs> so we're going to sign off for now, but once again, we would like to thank you and uh, we would like to ask you to, um, to join our free subscription for Roku TV. Yes. We're also www.thedisabilitychannel.ca and on Twitter, tdchannel.1, sorry, tdchannel1 uh, and we're also on Facebook and LinkedIn as well. You can find us there. Um, and Instagram, I think, too, as well. Same, same, uh, at uh, TD Channel 1, one. <laughs> on Instagram. So, so, again, thank you for joining us. And, and on behalf of myself, Kathy Ruggles, and my sidekick over here, Sujit Reddy, we would like to thank you for joining us today, TGC Today. Welcome everybody back to Taste Ears with me, Chef Smiley. All right, today I'm gonna to make something quick and simple, you know, for the health buffs too. We're making a chicken Caesar with um, fresh chicken breasts. I got fresh romaine, and for my croutons, I'm gonna be using garlic bread instead. Okay, so first I'm gonna start off by seasoning the chicken breast. Right, remember I told everybody, it's not all just about the uh, salt and pepper, right? We need, we got all kinds of spices to make this thing taste right. All right, so we got the chicken breast, simple. For my spices, for this one, I'm gonna use some granulated garlic, right? Granulated garlic, just a little, little dusting. Also, a little Italian seasoning. This will, will make it taste nice. As you can see, right? A little dusting of that. And lemon pepper. <laughs> we got the lemon pepper. Like I told you before, for this, there you go, beautiful. So, the basic, but salt, as we go, give it a little twist. That's it. And the black pepper. 
first ground in. All right. For me, I'd like to just use just a dab of olive oil, a little dab. As we go. Now, I will get my pot ready. We got the pot on. Stove on, getting warm. And we got to get more warm for us. All right. Get the fan going. Know that everything is off the side. As you see, beautiful. Two nice sized chicken breasts. That could feed two healthy adults. All right. A little dust of olive oil to get it going. And it is getting hot. I can see it. The pan is getting hot. See how the, the, the seasoning soaked in very nicely. That's how you want it. You don't need more than that. All right. This is an inductive uh, um, burner we're using, so it gets hot very fast. As you hear the sizzling. My tongs. Um, we're gonna get it um, going. We just wanna see the steam, right? As we go. Thank you. You can hear the sizzle. Nice. Sir. It only takes a couple minutes, man. If we it, gone over ten minutes, it's too long. See, as we see already, it's starting to get the color in. Right? So as, as that is cooking, up on the side, I am going to make, um, get the bowl and stuff ready. Alright, with the salad, I'm going to change my gloves here because that was raw chicken that we had, we had with that. And that's a cross-contamination if you mix that with your uncooked products. I got big hands, so, you know, sometimes these gloves are a handful. But yeah, we got some fresh romaine here, right? So usually it's cut, cut off the ends. For me, I cut them into fours, right? Into fours. And we have all kinds of bolts that we could, uh, we have to use this thing with. All right. As my sous chef gets ready, my bowl. Chicken is coming nicely. Beautiful. Let me turn up the heat just a bit more. So. Let me go some of the way. So I have cut it in fours so that they come into nice little squares. All right. As you see, nice fresh romaine. Nice healthy serving to grown adults. Let me bring this off to the side. Let's show. All right. And my tongs, my tongs. But you can even use a spoon, even so. But tongs is ideal, right? You see, when the tongue, if you don't have the tongs, it's a little bit, right? But whatever works, whatever you use, you got to make it work. Got the tongs. Yes, the tongs were used for the for the raw chicken, so we're waiting right. for them to come back to you. Yeah, that's all. That's why. You know, you have to be versatile, be able to use anything that you find in the kitchen to make it work, right? As the chicken is cooking, it is almost ready. We're gonna take a break and come back 
with the per with the final part of this meal. Okay? Thank you. Welcome back everybody. So we're back. The chicken is pretty much done. As you can see, nice and juicy. I'm gonna pop this on the cutting board. Beautiful. Beautiful. Now I'm just gonna turn the heat up a little bit more and we're gonna toast these fresh garlic bread into croutons. And as you can see, the steam is coming, it's beautiful. Right? We're gonna do the two, make some nice fresh, fresh croutons. This way you can cut it any way you like. Right? Let me move this. So chicken breast is here. You can just cut it up. See how easy it cuts? Nice. Nice and moist. See? Beautiful. No pink in it at all. All you see is juice. All you see is juice. Juicy. If it's not juicy, then you don't want it. Right? Beautiful. Nice. I'll bring this up to the camera so you can see. See how juicy it is? The juice is dripping. Juicy. That's what we want. We got the garlic bread here. Toast it nicely. We got it sticking to the pan, but it's okay. Right out into the right out into the bowl when we are finished. So I am gonna turn this off and finish that. Now it's time to get this thing tossed. So my sous chef, can you pass me? Uh, can I get one of the uh, smaller bowls here? Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, no, give me that one. Yeah, thank you very much. My sous chef on the side. So shy, I never want to get on the camera. So I, I'm okay with that. All right. So we got. Main, right, the bread is ready. It's going right into, I'm going to take off the bread and just throw it right into the bowl. So, I can finish this and turn it off. Chicken wise, sorry. Right, we've got some chicken here. up inside the bowl inside the pot right coming right out into you can't beat this see how hot it is beautiful all right good to go so we got the chicken fresh croutons fresh croutons fresh chicken and we got the creamy Asiago Caesar dressing. This is one of the tops, very good flavor. This gives you, right? And then a little toss. As you can see, a little toss. And we are pretty much good to go. it as you can see need a, let's wipe off a little spot right here I'm gonna need my plate all right like I said it's enough for two healthy healthy adults lots look at this lots it's for one person and we even have another we can make it we have enough to make another and what I'm going to do is grate some fresh Asiago cheese on top, right? As you can see, right? 
grate some nice fresh Asiago cheese. All right. And I will end it off with a splice of lemon. Bottom, bottom cup there, right? It should be in there on the side. Even so, thank you. So give it a nice toss with some fresh lemon. Let's cut this in half here. And we are good to go. Give it a nice little fresh wedge of lemon on the side and you're good to go. All right, so there you go. You got your fresh chicken Caesar salad. All right, thank you. I hope you guys enjoyed that. All right, stay tuned to Tastiers. We got more tasty dishes for you. All right, with me, Chef Smiley. Thank you.